forward and now we could start. Um, okay. Uh, hi, everyone. My name is Maureen Pollock. I'm one of the staff planners here with the town of Amherst. Um, and so welcome today to today's listening session. Um, the town of Amherst um, seeks to understand how our community can uh, best serve older adults and, and uh, for people with dementia as the town seeks to become an age and dementia friendly community. Uh, the town is working with Becky Bish, who's here today from Pioneer Valley Planning Commission, who's assisting us with this project, as well as uh, working group members to provide oversight and to um, host um, our various listening sessions, such as today. Um, each month we've been holding these listening sessions to gather input from older adults, caregivers, and others who are aging here in Amherst. Today's listening session is on transportation, buildings, and outdoor spaces. Um, and if you haven't already, um, if you uh, want to, you could go to the ch chat feature here on in Zoom and type in your name. And you could uh, type in, we invite you to type in what is your uh, main transportation challenge that you face in Amherst? Um, and you, so you could type that into the chat um, if you so wish. Um, we'll have some discussion points in today's um, session. So um, you could um, also discuss those at, um, at those times too. So uh, with that, I hand it over to Becky. Thanks Maureen and welcome everyone. I'm just gonna put my presentation up. Okay. Um, so this is the third of five listening sessions that we're doing um, with the Age and Dementia Friendly Amherst um, project. And the focus today is on transportation, buildings, and outdoor spaces. Um, so I'm gonna do a brief presentation about the project and sort of some things to think about in terms of transportation buildings and outdoor spaces for older adults. Um, and then we have a few other people who are gonna be talking about transportation Amherst assets in Amherst. So uh, we have uh, one, a couple people here from PVTA. Um, we have Guilford Mooring from the Department of Public Works and uh, Maureen's gonna talk about the ADA transition plan. And then, um, sorry to put you on the spot, Liz, I have the volunteer driver program with that Amherst Neighbors offers. Um, and then um, it looks like we don't have a lot of people, so we'll see about you know whether we have a group discussion or breakout rooms. We may just keep it a group discussion since it's not a, a really big group. Um, so why are we here? Why plan for an aging population? Um, so the number of people over the age of 65 is projected to outnumber children under 18 by 2035 <laughs> nationwide. And that's because people are living longer and having fewer children. Um, so it's something to think about. It's, it's soon to become a majority of the population in, in many communities. Um, and it's estimated that one in three people over the age of 85 will have some form of dementia at their end of their lives. So as people live longer, there's higher, higher probability of, of, of having some kind of dementia. And Alzheimer's is the highest um, statistical uh, probability of, of the type of dementia. Uh, we're talking um, today about transportation, buildings and outdoor spaces. This is a model developed by the Massachusetts Healthy Aging Collaborative that just shows that age and dementia friendly communities um, really involve all sectors of the community and uh, both the built environment. So that's what we're talking about today, um, as well as the social environment, public safety and health and community services. Um, some statistics um, or, or data from the American Community Survey, the total population of Amherst is about 40,000 and 13% or about 5,200 people are over the age of 60. Um, and then some older data from the Mass Healthy Aging Collaborative, um, almost 26% of people over 65 live alone in Amherst. About 12% over 65 have been diagnosed with Alzheimer's or related dementias. 16% uh, have a diagnosis of deafness or hearing impairment. 
4.2% with self-reported vision impairment and 10.3% with self-reported mobility impairments. Uh, when we think about transportation, we're thinking both services and transportation infrastructure. Um, so you wanna have safe and affordable modes of both private and public transportation, um, supported transportation for people with disabilities, um, and then infrastructure for walking and biking, because many older people still want to walk and uh, want to walk to do their errands. Um, so sidewalks that are in good conditions and road crossings that allow time for slower walkers or people in wheelchairs um, and well-timed signals and signs that are clear and easy to read. Um, so this is a, a image I, I got from the UMass um, Gerontology Center did a presentation on transportation. There's, there's sort of a continuum of needs and services and it's, it's not necessarily age-based, but the older you get, the more um, likelihood you'll have some kind of mobility impairment. So it starts with being independent and having your own vehicle or being able to walk to public transit, um, to taking a taxi, which would be curb to curb. Uh, to paratransit services, so door-to-door -door services, and then eventually needing more help getting through the door. So um, it's, it's really looking into um, where you start needing to have more supportive transportation services. Um, in Amherst, and we'll hear a little bit more from PBTA later, um, you have the fixed route buses, 12 routes, um, with discounts for people 60 and older. Um, you have dial ride van service for people over 60 with PVTA, door-to-door um, -door paratransit vans for people with disabilities, um, then taxis or rideshare services um, such as Uber and Lyft. I'm not sure how, how prevalent that is in Amherst. Um, and then van services provided by some assisted living facilities and the Amherst Neighbors Volunteer Driver Program. Um, for transportation infrastructure, we're mainly looking at, at walkability. So a walkable community is one that has compact mixed use development. So destinations that can be reached by foot. Um, you have sidewalks, street trees and frontage zones um, along the sidewalks. Narrower traffic lanes and shorter road, for shorter road crossings and more room for bikes um, and sidewalks. Uh, safe and well-lit pedestrian crossings, paths and trails, and especially ones that you can walk to, um, buffered shoulders, and in some cases, shared roadways. So where there's less traffic, um, it's shared by all, all users. Um, some elements of a walkable street. Um, for denser areas, you have a mixed use area that might have benches as well as um, in the pandemic, we saw a lot of restaurants offering outside seating. Um, a rural area might have more of a buffer between the sidewalk and the street. Um, and on the right is an image of a less walkable street where, you know, the, there's not really places to walk to. The, there's big, big box stores that are far away from the street um, and there's no buffer between the um, traffic and pedestrians. Um, so pedestrian crossings, you want to have them visible and well lit. So the, the crossings themselves are, are brightly painted, um, generally the zebra pattern. Um, there's a number of different types of uh, warning signs for drivers. So you have the flashing beacon at the lower right, you have uh, pedestrian activated stop signs and um, just the, the pedestrian crossing signs and with, with street lighting. Um, some traffic calming elements. Um, this image on the lower right is just shows that the higher the traffic speed, the more probability there is for fatalities if a pedestrian gets hit by a car. So um, a safer street would be one where traffic is really slowed down. So you might have narrower traffic lanes um, that you can create with pedestrian islands and, and wider shoulders. Um, speed humps or raised crosswalks, and I know Amherst has some of those. Um, and then these, um, these pictures show uh, the walkability really varies by location in Amherst. So this is a website called walkscore.com, and you can put in your address and see what the walk score is at that location. So um, on the left is a walk score for um, down um, Amity Street, 
and that's got a walk score of 80s out of 100. Um, but then if you type in Amherst Center, it looks at the whole area and it shows that, you know, when the green area is really more walkable and as the farther that you get out, it's a little bit less walkable. And basically they're measuring um, what services or, or amenities there are to walk to and not necessarily the sidewalk condition. Um, for the age and dementia friendly Amherst survey, uh, we asked people what the primary ways were that people meet their transportation needs in Amherst. And um, most people still drive themselves about 90%, um, but almost 25% said they walk um, and almost 11% said they use bikes or e-bikes. Um, a, a fairly good number at, has friends or family members who drive them um, and about 10% said they use the PBTA bus. Um, we then broke that down by age um, and the different age groups on the survey. Um, over 80% over of people up to the age of, up into their 80s said they still drive and even 60% of people over 90. Um, and this just shows that 20 to 30% in each age category uh, walks. And um, there were fewer respondents over 90, so it's a little bit skewed, but um, a lot of people still walk to, to, for transportation and prefer to walk. Um, and I won't go into all the other details with these, but um, as you can see, as you know, people get older, a little bit fewer of people drive to meet their transportation needs. Um, we also asked if people, if there are locations where people don't feel safe um, in the community. And by and large, the most, most responses were from people who so they didn't feel safe walking. Um, so we we tallied the different streets that where people said they didn't feel safe walking, um, and so we'll we'll provide those to the town just to to look at you know whether those fit into their um, the plans for upgrading sidewalks or or crosswalks. Um, there were a few places where people said they didn't feel safe bicycling and a couple where they didn't feel safe getting to bus stops. So those are some things to pay attention to. Uh, when we talk about buildings and outdoor spaces, um, those are important for places to gather. So both inside and out and outside places became especially important during the pandemic. Um, a lot of people socializing outside. Uh, buildings are accessible and have parking for people with wheelchairs. Uh, parks have benches and smooth pathways for people with wheelchairs or walkers. Um, there's access to handicapped accessible restrooms and key locations and parks and sidewalks are safe and well lit. Um, this picture shows the improvements at the Bangs Community Center um, where there was a new ADA ramp and, and lighting and benches and a bike rack that were recently installed. And then universal design is a concept where um, new buildings are designed to um, be usable by all people of all abilities um, without the need for adaptation. So that just means that from the beginning, you're designing um, like no step entries for people in wheelchairs. So you don't have to go back and put in a wheelchair ramp. It's already accessible for everyone. Um, and, it's, and that's a lot more, in, a, a much more inclusive way to design a building. Um, this is a checklist that Age Strong Boston put together um, for age, for age and dementia friendly businesses. And I put this up because it shows a number of things to think about when designing for uh, people with dementia. So looking at lighting, um, so it's bright and uniform to reduce glare. Um, glass doors should be clearly marked. Um, there's seating, um, so avoid putting it near windows or with, where there's a glare. Um, and then just having um, background music or, or much or having sort of quiet, quiet places, resting areas, um, and floors are non stiff, non shiny um, for, for uh, safety. Um, and then some other things are color contrast. So bathrooms have installed color contrast toilet seats and handrails. Um, furnishings, contrast with walls for easy, easy visibility, um, quiet seating areas, larger bathrooms to allow for people um, with caregivers. Um, 
And some examples of what some other communities have done for age-friendly outdoor spaces. Um, Hamilton, Ontario uh, created a guide, an age-friendly guide to trails um, where they ranked design features, so surface and slope um, amenities, so restrooms and benches, and then maintenance and aesthetics and traffic intersections, so ease of getting to the trails by walking. Um, and then AARP has also put together um, a really great guide for creating parks and public spaces for people of all ages. Um, and some other things to think about are making sure you have activities for people of all ages and in all seasons, um, designing parks for all, so creating comfortable places and providing amenities such as restrooms and pedestrian paths, often um, parks with a walking loop or, or walking trails that are marked with distances are, are um, something that people like to see. Um, and then just putting pedestrians first, so allowing people to be able to walk to parks without feeling um, that they're unsafe. Um, this is just an example of a sign that's not age friendly um, that I found at a trailhead. Um, it's, it's high, it's unreadable, pipe is very small and there's a big glare. So just something to think about when, when um, designing signage, you know, is it, is it readable and is it accessible for people of all ages? So that's it for my presentation. Um, I'm happy to take questions and um, just end the show here. Um, okay, so are there any questions right off or if not, we'll go on to the um, other presenters. I don't see any questions. Um, so next we have um, some folks here from PVTA. So Ben and Leland, um, do you guys have a presentation? Yeah, hi. Um, my name is Benjamin St. Amon. I work here at PVTA along with Le Leland Zach. Um, I am the safety and compliance coordinator. So I have some oversight over our paratransit vehicles and our fixed route vehicles. Um, and Leland is the travel trainer, uh, so he will assist those who are looking to learn how to ride the bus. <laughs> Hello, and I'll put my uh, contact information in the chat if any of you would like to get a hold of me. So thank you, Leland. So I have a little presentation here if I'm able to share my screen. Um, Becky, let me see if I can do that. Looks like I can. I think you can. Okay. I have this right. Looks like it's okay. Should be able to see that. Okay, so <clears throat> so some of the options that we have, as was already as were already mentioned earlier, um, we have our fixed route bus service. Of course, everyone can take. Um, there is an option for the senior for seniors, anyone sixty years of age and older, to obtain a senior fare ID, reduced fare ID, pay half price as long as you show that ID. Um, it costs $3, and it can be purchased at the Holyoke Transportation Center, or it can be purchased at the at Union Station, of course. But also, we do have various outreach events, which are often coordinated with your local council on aging. Uh, Leland and I were just at one recently, and uh, up there at the Amherst Senior Center, and uh, we, we took the photos right there, and um, you didn't have to pay anything, and we mailed you the cards uh, shortly afterwards. So, there's always that option as well. So if that's something that you have a number of folks who are interested, uh, that can be arranged. Um, and then of course we have the paratransit bus services. Those are the vans that offer the door-to-door -door service uh, for those who we have the ADA for those who are disabled. Um, of course, all these vehicles have wheelchair lifts. So even if you're using a dial ride, even if you use the dial ride service, there is still a wheel wheelchair lift. Now the ADA application, you must apply directly with PVTA before you can book an ADA trip. Um, <clears throat> excuse me. Now, just because you are disabled or just because you have a handicap placard, that doesn't necessarily mean that you're automatically approved for the service. The disability must prevent you from being able to use the regular vehicles, the regular fixed route buses in order to uh, have the application. And that takes, uh, up to 21 days from the date of receipt to process once we have everything we need. And then there's the dial-a-ride service. There's no application required. 
um, anyone 60 years of age older can use. And with either of these options, you would have to call at least one day in advance um, to book your trip. So next up, I just wanna talk about how you can obtain schedule information. Of course, you can go directly to our website, pbta.com, um, but also there is the transit app, which is the official app that uh, PBTA uses for all of our bus, bus services, um, which is available at transitapp.com. So once you go to the main website, pbta.com, this is what you're presented with. You just click right on schedules and maps, and then you'll, um, sorry, hold on, that'll bring you to this next page. Now you can click on the individual uh, schedules and view them, or you can use what I like to use, which is the interactive system map. So once you click on that, you're presented with the entire system that's gonna show you all of our routes. Now, obviously in Amherst, we have uh, quite a number of routes specifically, and I just wanted to talk about a couple of them. Um, there's plenty to explore there, but for example, the B43, this would be, um, this one is fairly useful. You have stops at Smith College, Hampshire Mall, uh, UMass Haggis Mall area and Amherst College. So plenty of, of course, stops along the way there, but those are some of the major ones. Then we have the uh, Route 30. Um, this one starts at Puff, or yes, I believe it starts at Pufftown Village Apartments. Then it goes to the UMass uh, Graduate Research Center, Mass, UMass Fine Arts Center, Post Office, Colonial Village Apartments, Valley Medical Center, and Old Belchertown Road. Those are some of the points on that route. Route 31, this, is gonna, this goes as far north as Sunderland Center. Uh, Amherst Grove Apartments, Townhouse Apartments, stops in UMass, the Amherst Post Office, and the Boulder Apartments. And then we have uh, the Puffer Pond. Uh, we call this the uh, Shopper Shuttle. This one is quite useful if you're looking to get around town locally. Just gonna, this is the map that you'll see if you were to download the map um, from the website or view. You can see it's all around various locations right in within Amherst. You have the of course, Mill Hollow, Puffers Pond, the Survival Center, uh, Riverside Park Plaza, Plaza, Cushman Center, Topman Gym, Stops in UMass, Amherst Post Office, CVS and Big Y, and the Hadley Stop and Shop. So there's, if you need to get your groceries done or mail, mail something at the post office, lots of options there. Um, and then this is the Route 45, which heads all the way down to Belcher Town Center. So couple of different options here. Route 46, that one goes up to the Waitley Park and Ride um, in South Deerfield Center. And also the Sunderland Center, Amherst Grove Apartments, Cliffside Apartments. So you can get up into, if you're going to need to go travel up into um, Franklin County, there's a connection um, connection there from us to, you would have to coordinate that of course with whoever, uh, I believe it's the Franklin RTA. And then of course, these are some of the Southern uh, routes uh, headed down, headed south out of Amherst. So lots of different options on the fixed route. And of course, like I had mentioned before, if you uh, are interested in using the dial ride services for seniors or the ADA, um, <clears throat> applying for ADA, um, you can, I would highly recommend using those services as well. So, and uh, Leland, if you could just maybe explain a little bit about the um, travel training and kind of what, what's involved with that? Sure. So um, my program is um, the travel training program. And I teach people uh, with disabilities, seniors, um, really anyone who needs assistance uh, using the fixed route service. Um, so I actually come out to your house and we can start there or your apartment or we can start at the Council of Aging, wherever you need to, wherever you're starting from. And I take you out on the bus and we go over everything, every single step. Um, so that means how to find your bus stop, how to use the transit apps like Transit or Google Maps, um, how to use the bus tracker, um, how to get on the bus, um, how to pay for the bus, how to find your um, landmark destination where you need to go. Um, we even go over some things like um, a safe uh, street crossing, um, stranger awareness um, for people who need some more assistance with that. So uh, if that's something anybody is interested in, um, feel free to give me a call or uh, an email. It's a free service. 
All that you have to pay for is your bus fare. Um, and we work towards your independence. So like I said, I start by your side, showing you every step of the process. And the whole goal is for your independence. So if you're not, if you, if you're say currently relying on um, the van service, or if you're relying on um, friends or family to give you a ride, and those are things you no longer wish to do, maybe you're giving up driving and you just need that extra support in using the um, fixed route bus service. That's why I'm here. I'd also like to add that um, all of the buses in the Amherst area are actually free. Um, they are fare free for everybody. The only one you would have to pay for is the um, B43 that gets you from Amherst to Northampton. Um, and with that bus, it's uh, our fare is 150. Um, as seniors with your senior ID, you could get on that bus for 75 cents. Um, so that's really the only fare you would have to worry about. All right, great. Thank you so much. Um, and I think that's it for our presentation. Um, I don't know if we're doing questions now or questions later. Becky, wasn't sure about that. Um, why don't we hold yeah. it till, or yeah, why don't we hold the questions till all the presenters, if that's okay? Okay, great. Oh. Good. Oh. Elise, did you? Okay. I can wait. I have, but I can wait. Okay. Um, so next we have um, Guilford from the Department of Public Works. Yeah, there he is. Guilford, you're muted. There you are. Hi. Um, we don't have much of a presentation. We just wanted to talk a little bit about how we prioritize sidewalk work in Amherst. Um, right now, we're prioritizing sidewalks in the downtown area and going out towards schools. So any of those sidewalks are the ones we're working at this time. Um, we are choosing to work on the easier ones first and to repair the ones we already have. So what that means is one that's easy to meet ADA requirements, not have to do a lot of interesting back switches or grading or something like that. Those are the ones we kind of concentrate on first and we move in the general area of the schools and the um, downtown first. So this is what we're doing right now. So that's our general program. And I'll be happy to take questions when you're ready to do questions. Okay. Um... Maureen, do you want to talk about the ADA transition plan? Hi, everyone. Um, my name is Maureen Pollock, and um, I'm, as I said before, I'm one of the staff planners with the town. I'm also the uh, staff liaison to the Disability Access Advisory Committee. AKA the DAAC. Um, there's a few members uh, present here today, uh, including Elise, hi Elise. And I think Saren is, Ruth is here and so is Saren. Um, so thank you uh, to the three of you for attending. And um, so in 2020, the town of Amherst updated its ADA self-evaluation and transition plan uh, with the assistance uh, from uh, the planning department and inspection services and with the, um, the um, consultant uh, with um, a consultation from a, a consultant group, they're called uh, Disability Access Consultants LLC and from the DAAC members. Um, and so this project uh, was granted, uh, grant funded through the Community Development Block Grant, uh, CDBG funding. And um, to give you a little snapshot of what a uh, self-evaluation transition plan means um, and why, why the town needed to update it. Um, you know, it's a requirement under federal law for the town to update this plan under uh, Title II of the Americans with Disabilities Act. 
uh, is the, so the town under, so under that act, the town is required to complete a self-evaluation for the town's public facilities, programs, services, activities, and events. And it aims to uh, determine whether like our buildings, for instance, are ADA compliant and identify any sort of accessibility barriers, um, like physical barriers, like a doors on opening properly or a ramp where there should be a ramp, maybe there isn't a ramp, things of that nature. Are the elevators working? Is there proper signage? Um, those, that's just like giving you a few examples. And then the plan also identifies um, how those barriers can be corrected. Um, so in a way, it's like a master plan of, you know, it's, it's saying, or it, it's a it shows you what it looks like now, of like what are the current conditions, and then it's then saying wh where do you go from here, and how do you make those improvements, and so this plan provides a current benchmark and updated framework for implementation for accessory uh, accessibility efforts by the town. The last time it was updated, I believe, was in 2005. So um, you know, since 2005 to 2020, there's been, you know. Um, a lot, a lot of uh, improvements made, and we want to make sure that they're um, up to code with accessibility, uh, state and, and federal laws. And then, so the goal of, for the town is uh, is that um, is that the potential physical and programmatic barriers for accessibility for persons with disabilities are removed. Um, the town um, tra uh, self evaluation and transition plan serves as a roadmap to assist the town with ongoing compliance. And since this plan has been finalized and it is listed on the town website and we can put it in the chat so you can get a, um, a PDF copy of it, um, is that um, the town, so since it's been finalized, the town has made um, efforts to make ADA improvements. Um, and these are just uh, a few just that quickly came to my mind. Um, so we have created an annual capital budget line item budget devoted for ADA improvements for our public facilities. Um, so th that's really good. And then we have um, of uh, the, the various ADA barriers in, identified in the self-evaluation and transition plan, the town has corrected um, uh, a variety of those uh, barriers such as um, we've replaced uh, various crosswalks and curb ramps in downtown um, on Amity Street and on, um, let's see here, on East and North Pleasant Street. Uh, we recently, uh, DPW recently just repaved, uh, redid the Amity Street sidewalk and crosswalks um, and uh, the inspection services and facilities department. Um, uh, repaired the stairs and constructed a new ADA ramp outside of the bank center. There was a slide um, in Becky's presentation that showed um, some photos of that. Um, so those stairs were in crumbling condition and um, there wasn't a nice uh, smooth um, ADA pathway leading from uh, one entrance to the other. Um, and so there, um, if you had to go to the backside of the bank center, you had to go all the way around. And now the ramp, the ADA ramp provides a much shorter distance for someone trying to connect from like the Clark House, for instance, that wants to go over to the bank center or to move on over to like um, Main Street. Um, we, uh, we've recently actually, uh, in uh, our facilities department just recently finished I think a couple of weeks ago, fixed some ADA non-compliancy issues at the main door uh, to the bank center. Um, there was the automatic door opener wasn't um, uh, broke in the last year. And so that's been corrected. And there were some sloping issues in front of that door. So those items have been uh, addressed. Um, the town recently just ordered listening devices um, for all meeting rooms in the bank center. And I believe that was a recommendation from the Council on Aging, as well as uh, you know a variety of older adults in town. And it was identified in the plan as something that was a priority. Um, and so the town has secured money for putting in listening devices in the bank center. So now we just need to do like a RFP to um, order them and stuff. So those should be coming in in the next, um, 
the next year. And we've made um, some updates to the town website to make it more ADA friendly. Um, there's some interactive tools um, that you can um, uh, increase the um, the font size and change, make the the color of the text and the background have contrasting colors. Um, there's this widget that you can find on on each of the pages of the of the web's website. It's located at the bottom right. Um, there's an icon that's in blue, and it's like a little stick figure of a person. If you click on that, it opens up to this um, accessibility tool widget, um, and it does a variety of different um, um, ADA-friendly um, improvements to uh, as you're utilizing the town website. And uh, we're currently working to audit all town audible signals at our crosswalks. So, like, say if you're at the main street uh main street in main and what south pleasant street for instance intersection and you want to cross the street you press the button and it says wait wait and then when it's time to cross i think it says i kind of forget what it says maybe it says you can cross um so that's an example of an audible signal so some of them work and some of them don't some of them are you know loud enough some of them are not so um, the town has secured money to have someone, um, an expert, go in and, and take a look at, uh, you, make sure that they're working properly, and to record if, you know, do they need if if the ones aren't working properly, do they need to be repaired or do they need to be replaced? So that's something that the town's working on this year, and those are just some of the projects that came to mind that have resulted that have been identified in the plan and that the town has um, making efforts to make improvements and you know this plan is a living document which is routinely reviewed by town staff for continued implementation and um, it looks at all sorts of facilities such as parking lots buildings conservation trails recreation um, parks and stuff like that so any facility that's open to the public has been uh, evaluated for its ADA compliancy. And again, I'll put a, a link to the PDF and um, it is found on the town website as well. Um, so thank you. That's all I got. Thanks, Maureen. Um, and then Liz, do you want to say a little bit about the Amherst Neighbors Driver Program? Sure, I'm happy to. Um, so we have been up and uh, going with our, I, I just, oh, there's just one thing I want to get. Anyway, we, yes, we have been up and uh, going with our volunteer drivers for about a year. And um, the, the, the main thing is that people, we get, I have to just say in terms of identifying a need of all the volunteer services that we provide, this is the fastest growing and it's I think the biggest demand is volunteer drivers. So many people who are joining Amherst Neighbors, because we are a membership organization, which is free, um, people become members and then they have access to the full range of volunteer services that we provide. Um, and uh, rides are a big thing. And for, for many, for I think a, a particular subset is we have people who are, who have experienced a recent health change um, and have been independent prior and come to us um, and come to us when they've kind of hit a bump in the road and they've had at least a temporary change in their health. Um, and so they are looking for a little extra help in the way of transportation. We have uh, about 20 volunteers who provide rides and uh, we've done, I think between 130 and 150 rides since we started. And it is, it is growing quickly. Um, one of the things we also try to encourage people to do is rely on all the other sources of transportation that they've had prior to meeting us, um, because we know that we cannot meet the entire demand. And we also um, encourage people to become familiar with the PVTA and especially with the dial ride. Um, so anyway, and I have questions about that. Um, um, later when we get to asking questions. Um, so that is um, kind of how we work. Uh, we do require that people are vaccinated um, for the COVID vaccine in order to receive transportation and that as are our volunteers. 
and that everybody wears a mask um, in, a, in the car. Um, so that is how we work and it is the demand is just going up very, very fast. Um, so far we've been able to mostly meet um, meet what people are asking for. We, we have to be very clear though that we are not a last minute ride service. We're a plan ahead ride service. Um, so, um, so that's how it's going. It's very exciting. We have new people who are becoming volunteers who say they want to, uh, that they want to drive. The one thing I'll say is our volunteers are willing to really go locally. We weren't sure what we would find when we started. Um, and that means we really don't get volunteers who say they want to drive to Springfield or Greenfield to say nothing of Worcester or Boston. That just is not what we can do. So that's kind of our big limit is how far people are, how far people can, um, are providing rides. So that's it. Thanks, Liz. Sure. Um, so we can provide questions or we have um, time for questions and um, then we can, let's see. I think we'll probably just keep it as a group discussion since we don't have a lot of people. Um, so um, I see a couple of hands already. Uh, Chris, you wanna? Oh, I had a question Sorry. for, um, I guess it's Leland or Ben, and that is, um, does the B43 take cash on the bus or do you have to have some kind of special prepaid ticket to get on? How does that work? You can use um, cash or coins. Uh, um, so yeah, dollar bills or coins or you can uh, buy a bus pass ahead of time. Um, please keep in mind that if you are paying with cash, um, it's exact change, no pennies. Uh, you can certainly pay over. So if your fare is um, the senior fare of uh, the half price fare at 75 cents, you could put a dollar in, but you're not going to get your quarter back. Um, so please keep that in mind. Um, but we do also have, it, once you're on the bus, you can get a day pass if you so needed. Um, we also have month passes available at our um, uh, service centers, such as Union Station in Springfield and um, Holyoke Transportation Center in Holyoke. Um, and those are 30 day passes available. Um, also at Big Y too, Big Y locations have them. Thanks. Elise. All right, I have a couple. Um, one, I have a couple of transportation questions. One is, um, as a legally blind person with a guide dog, I have used the ADA paratransit um, before the pandemic, like, you know, 2018, 19, you know, um, and I haven't used it since then. Does one need to reapply for that on a, you know, from time to time, or am I, would I still be listed? I don't know if that's the right question for this thing. What's your, um, what's your last name? If you don't mind my Link. asking. Uh, Link. Um, yeah, I was just wondering what one does when they haven't used it for a while. We were reviewing to see if people were still mm -hmm. um, actively using the services. Typically, if you're approved, there is a it, mm -hmm. it's it's not an indefinite amount of time. Yeah. Um, so let's let me just double check on the status of yours. Yeah, and I can and tell you right now. Quite, yeah. So, yeah, I want to take up precious time. I just link is the last yeah. name. Yep. So if I look at, yeah, so it, it looks like your, your application ended uh, uh. and um, it was from April, 2016 to, to, or yeah, from April, 2016, to April, 2021. So appears okay. to be a five-year, a five-year um, for the unconditional. You had a, an unconditional meaning you could use, it yeah. was, uh, you could use the service no matter, you know, some people have mm -hmm. conditions, meaning it depends on the weather. It depends on the time of day that that kind of determines if they're going to need to use ADA or not. So you would have to reapply. Okay. And the other question I have, and this is why I have used the PV, the um, paratransit. I use it when I can, when I have to get somewhere that's not on the bus line. And the other times I've relied on it is um, 
when in winter time, when the sidewalks are not clear of snow and the bus stops are not clear of snow, often I have seen people nearly fall and I've nearly fallen trying to climb over an ice bank to get on a PVTA bus. And it's New England folks. I, I don't think that's acceptable. Um, so I'm wondering what's being done about that. That's, that's my question. Is anything gonna be happening with that? I don't think it's safe. I think, you know, for somebody to go grocery shopping, they need to be able to, I have to be able to buy toilet paper. You know, uh, I don't want to climb over a snowbank and break my neck. <laughs> and unfortunately, I've seen that in um, multiple cities and towns. Um, yeah. Generally, uh, the, how the um, con, not really a contract, but how it's set mm -hmm. up is, um, the city is responsible for clearing snow in front of shelters mm -hmm. and around bus stops. Um, they except pass for the buck. Springfield, I believe. They pass the buck. They say it's PVTA with the bus stops. And then PVTA says, it's a, I've gotten the runaround. Um, and I think it's a safety issue. Mm -hmm. A huge safety yeah, issue. We've heard that in a lot of communities. Guilford, what, what is the policy in Amherst for snow clearing on sidewalks? Does the city do? Some of them are, um, is it businesses that have to do them? The policy in Amherst is the property owner adjacent to the sidewalk must clear it. And so that means even it's a bus stop, they're responsible. But we do not clear any of the, any of the bus stops that PVTA has in town. And we all, often call them to say they need to do something about it. Um, mm -hmm. and, and how does it work along Route 9 where uh for bus stops and getting access to the bus stops it doesn't yeah. work on route it nine doesn't. hadley takes no responsibility and neither do the businesses neither does amherst it's a well yeah but since most of route nine is in hadley i mean it nobody, that's true nobody does anything yep um, yep i i wish i had an answer for all of you on that um i I can, this is something I can definitely pass along to our director of operations. And if there is a specific occurrence where this happens, um, you could, I would recommend contacting our customer service to at least mention it. If it's one of the stops that is one of the you know, contractor's responsibilities, because our bus, our buses, we contract our bus service because of the laws in Massachusetts, we can't operate our own buses. We can just, we have to oversight of them, but if it's one that they are responsible for, then then we can make them aware and, and have them take care of it. Um, obviously, if the stops are like, for example, if the stops have been vandalized or if they've been uh, if there's trash, that is our responsibility. But as far as the snow, inclement weather, I'm not 100 percent versed on that. And that's something that, um, again, I would I would have to pass along mm -hmm. to the operations director. I did Thanks. just look at our uh, policy and I have it here. It's in writing that yes, the property owners are responsible for any adjacent um, shelters or bus stops. The only exception is city owned property in Springfield, um, as well as our locations such as um, the Transit Pavilion in Westfield um, and Holyoke Transportation Center um, mm -hmm. in Holyoke. Those are where PVTA is responsible. But for Amherst purposes, um, Hadley, um, it goes to the property owner um, for where that where those bus stops or shelters are. What about the um, post office in Amherst? Who does that one? Who's responsible? That would probably be, that would have to be whoever owns, you know, the, probably the, the post office themselves they okay. you know if they're removing their own snow uh on their property then that would be that would be their responsibility okay thank you for clarifying because because nobody seems to be clear on that so that that sounds like a something that should be in the plan <laughs> and it, that comes up in in pretty much every community that i work with and there are some some examples of um communities that are addressing this through various programs. So we'll definitely look at that. Uh, Saren. Uh, yes, um, I have a question about the access to uh, the tickets. 
Uh, I was trying to schedule a ride uh, for the Amherst neighbors, which got canceled due to weather. But that was the first time I was going to use the PVTA van service. And uh, they want exact change. And that sometimes is pretty difficult. And I said, could I give a $5 one or a give $10 and just charge the two rides with the same money? They said, no, they cannot do that. And so it's kind of difficult because you don't know the exact change amount. So is there a way that these booklets could be offered at banks, community center, so and announced to all the users in the area. So it will be, they, it's, they're located in the center of town and it will be quite accessible, easily accessible for many of us. Or maybe the drivers in the vans might offer that, those booklets. That was one of my uh, issues. The second one is you just said about an ID. Um, uh, you offered PVTA IDs to people at banks. And if this can be announced further, I am sure more people will visit the site at that time and get these PVTA um, ID cards easily. Well, I can jump in real quick, Sarah, and say that that, that is advertised in the Senior Spirit newsletter that we have a monthly outreach clinic um, with the PVTA that's on the second Tuesday of every month. And the Senior Center also sells the paratransit um, tickets. So you can stop by the senior center now. Um, we mm. already have booklets on site. And if you want to buy one, you can just make arrangements. Um, right now, I'm the one who's distributing um. tickets. But typically, when we have an admin assistant, um, that person can also sell you a ticket. So yeah, those are already happening, already um. in the newsletter. I encourage everyone to please read the senior spirit. I put a lot of love into Ooh. that monthly newsletter. <laughs> and we have a lot of great programs that you you might be thinking, oh, I wish they had that, and we do. Um, so well, that's my how plug. about PVTA? Uh, when you ask these questions to the P PVTA representative, if they can guide you, you can have access to the booklets in your town's senior center or that kind of a thing. And the only thing is, I have to either mail a check to them, and uh, I don't really know what, uh, how much each booklet is. I mean, it wasn't very informative of what I can do, but I missed the site in the uh, senior newsletter. All right. Well, you could definitely, um, the next time you're in the area, stop by, I can walk you through the process um, and you can leave that okay. day with a ticket. That's very good, thank you. Liz, I see you up next. Yes, thank you. I, I just have a question and I'm really happy that people from the PVTA are here. And I apologize, I don't want to take up a lot of your time, but I just want to see kind of how the dial a ride is working for people. And if there's things that would be helpful for us to be conveying to our members about using it. Um, I mean, my understanding is you can call the as as early as the day before, but if there's things that you could that you could just let us know to let our members know. Okay, so uh, the dial a ride has been pretty successful. Um, it, it, uh, it accounts for a fair amount of our, um, of our total ridership on the paratransit service. I have a, I actually had some information on this that I had just pulled up recently, dial a ride. Um, let's see, loading. So the percentage of dial a ride, it, it accounts for almost as much as 25% on average of all of our day, except for Sundays, because it's not offered on Sundays, but um, on average for our daily ridership. So dial a ride is a pretty, uh, pretty large percent of our ridership. Um, we've actually started in some areas um, expanding the hours to dial a ride. Because oh. because it's actually been a it's been a good service that's that's been worth it's been worth expanding. 
Um, what we can say is that we now have higher staffing levels of drivers. Uh, it took some time to get more drivers, but now we're able to um, we're able to take on more trips. And so previously, I might have said, if there's anything to tell your riders, is that um, you know there may there might be times of day times of the day where the ADA riders have to take a precedent because we have to transport the ADA riders. Um, but I would still say to have some flexibility in your schedule, um, because again, if someone needs to get to uh, a life sustaining, you know, dialysis, for example, and you have just a shop, not just, but you have a shopping trip, um, you know, we have to take, there has to be some precedent for the ADA riders, um, over the dial ride riders. So still, maintain that flexibility. Um, but for the most part, things have increased as far as our driver availability now. Mm -hmm. And so we are, we are seeing an increase in the, uh, percentage of those using dial ride. So it's been a good service. I mean, it's been a, it's been a, um, it's been a successful service and it's something that we're going to continue to, to push and continue to offer. Now it is offered in Amherst, um, but some of the surrounding, towns we don't we don't have dial ride service in so like for example if you're taking that but the bus up into waitley uh, we don't we don't offer dial ride you know up in deerfield because that's not one of the we don't we don't offer our regular fixed route services there so just that one small stop that we do so there are some limits of course and again <laughs> dial ride is not available on the week on sunday um for sure and and every community has different hours uh, for the availability of dial ride So just those are a few things to keep in mind. And so is it available Saturday in Amherst? Um, I would have to just double check. They said sure. yes to me when I oh, asked okay. that question. <laughs> yeah, I, I believe it's just on, let's see, Amherst. Yeah. Um, hmm. uh, I might be looking at something older, but it says not on Saturdays for, for the current... Um, hours that we had recently okay so the what but the website is updated more more often okay. than that okay. we'll take we'll take a look at it and i'm just curious how much do other riders get um canceled because of the need to fulfill a ride for for people who fall under the ada well no one should be getting canceled but they may get the they, it may be denied they may have a denial of service uh, or okay. they may have a denial it's called but we we, I, I, the numbers have been in, in all in all service, whether it's ADA or dialer, right? It's been in the single digits now the last couple of months. So it's, okay. it's uh, certainly, and a denial is anytime you're offered a, 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 so let's say someone has a noon, they have a noon pickup time. Mm -hmm. Well, if you're offered one thirty, that's considered a denial because it's outside of an hour of your original requested time. So that doesn't mean that they're not getting a ride at all, but that means they may have to get a ride much later or earlier than they originally anticipated. So mm -hmm. that's something to keep in mind. I, I, as far as I know, we aren't, there's not, it's not been a large number of denials um, in general. Currently. And they would be told that at the time of call or after they've had an arrangement, there would be a change. That would be when they called if there okay. was going to be a, if there's going to be a denial. Okay, great. Thank you. You're welcome. That's really helpful. Rosemary. Yes, my question is whether or not there's any evening service with dial ride or if there are any rider services anywhere uh, available for older people. So and, for, and my and the other thing I wanted to mention is that um, I understand somebody asked the question about the drivers selling booklets, but it was my understanding that drivers are never handle money. Is that correct? As far as I know, um, for the paratransit vans, yes, they they can. As far as hold on a second, let me just double yeah, check. Yes, they, they can collect cash. The uh, paratransit drivers. Yeah, yep. yeah, I thought so. I, there's there's just a very few shuttles that can't that are not even anywhere near Amherst. They're they're different towns, so that's um. But yeah, for the most, these are all yeah, they're all able to process cash on those, and the the dial right hours I have are eight to four thirty 
Okay. I'm going to double check that though. Liz, does Amherst neighbors do evening rides? Interestingly enough, we don't get that request. Oh boy. So if we got the request, we would put it out. Okay. And then and then we would find out. <laughs> yeah. Right. I, I wouldn't have told you before that we don't go to Springfield or Greenfield. And <laughs> but that we just don't get takers. So in the same yeah. way, I would hope we'd get takers in the evening, but it really it hasn't been a request. Okay. Well, fortunately, some of our uh public city buses run, you know, um that late. Right. So yeah. they, they're they're running evening hours. Uh, some of them nine ten o'clock at night. So right. um, there is that service. Yes. Yeah, and it, it does look like that. Currently, it's still eight to four thirty p.m. for the dial a ride. Okay. For Thank Amherst. You. Thank you. Thanks. Uh, Ruth. Yeah, I, I just want to say my my husband has a number of times has taken uh, the rides that are available through the senior center, and the service has been very very reliable. Uh, they do give you a window the time they're going to pick you up and, and when they're going to bring you home. And so it's a little uh, large on both sides, but that's not an issue. But they come when they say they're going to come and they bring you back when they say they're going to bring you back. Yeah. So it's been a very dependable, reliable service. So I just wanted to put that in there. So that, that's through the senior center or through uh, Amherst through, Neighbors? Through the senior center. Through the senior oh. center. Okay, so Haley, you guys do volunteer ride service also? They had, I think my understanding is that during the pandemic that was suspended. And then so a huge thank you to the PVTA because they we are in the process of acquiring one of their retired vans. Um, yeah. And at which point, once we have that in place, because we need a van that has a wheelchair lift, um, we'll be able to resume our med ride program. Um, so very excited Great. about that. And thank you again to the PVTA. Great. Great to hear that. That's great. Um, Sue. Hi, thank you uh, to everyone for being here and for educating us. Um, I think it's terrific to see, you know, new ramps and new curb cuts and things of that sort. Um, one of my concerns, however, is that there are many people with disabilities that are invisible and there are many people with uh, heart and lung difficulties and we don't have a place to sit at many of the bus stops. And we also uh, don't have benches at regular intervals if people are trying to walk around downtown to run their errands. Um, and I think if we're gonna plan an age-friendly community, we really need to have places for people to stop and catch their breath or stop and wait until yeah. their heart rate goes back down. Um, yes. But just having ramps and just having curb cuts um, is not the answer for a lot of people who uh, struggle to get around. Thank you. How about public restrooms? Is that a, an issue or are there public restrooms in the downtown and, or? No, not really. Okay. If the library is open and their restroom's pretty pathetic. Oh, it's terrible. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, when we finally get a new library, that will help. But the re reality is that restrooms are definitely an issue. So when I when I saw the presentation about how there should be handicapped accessible restrooms, you know, I refrained from choking and laughing because they're not. But you know, a major problem for Amherst, and this is not the fault of any of the folks on this call who work for the town is that we don't budget maintain our physical plant very well and haven't for decades and it looks to me like we that will become even worse in the near future given inflation and the many demands in town for other uses for funds and so I think it behooves those of us who live in Amherst and vote in Amherst 
and care about these issues to start speaking up to the town council. And and specifically, are you talking about um, sidewalks, buildings? What's the main, what do you think are the main? All, all of the above, not to mention okay. pavements of streets, which we're not, not on the agenda right now, you know, but <laughs> okay. benches, anything, restrooms, although restrooms are a problem because they can get trashed by people when, you know, if they're in an un, if they're in a place where there isn't someone keeping an eye on it. So, but anyway, my political comment. <laughs> Thanks. Oh, you're concerned. Yeah. That's a, that's a, that's a uh, countrywide concern right now. There's less than 10% of public restrooms available for the population. It's, it's something everywhere. In fact, what it was brought up to the mayor of New York in the nineties, he said, well, there's a Starbucks in every corner. And so they, <laughs> they, it doesn't make any sense to have, you know, private equities supplement them, but um, that is something that's everywhere. And uh, I, I agree. That's something that should be looked at. Yes, there's such a thing as restroom desert. <laughs> um, Liz. Yeah, yeah, getting back to what Sue raised about benches being uh, interspersed, I think that I totally agree with that. And I just don't know what has been the thinking of the town in terms of putting in more benches for that particular goal in mind. Maureen or Chris? Uh... Has this come I, up? I can say I can say this is Chris um, that Maureen is actually an amazing person because she's constantly looking for money uh -huh. and she finds money in different places and the money can pay for things and it can pay for benches but we do need to coordinate and if we get a bench through a grant then DPW is um, called upon to put in the bench so they may have another work plan in mind and it may not include putting in benches so it takes coordination mm -hmm. and it takes looking for money and as someone recently said it's hard to find money in the town budget itself so we're constantly you know going around looking for grants but we try to do our best and we do think about putting in benches when we have the money and I wanted to answer a question that Tracy Zafian asked about public restrooms. There is a public restroom in town hall. There are public restrooms in town hall that are open when town hall is open and they're available uh, or accessible via elevator. Okay. Okay, thanks. Uh, Liz. Oh, I'm done. Okay. Sorry. Uh, Rose, Rosemary. Rosemary and then Elise. Oh, you're muted, Rosemary. I just have a comment about public restrooms. I wonder if the town has ever looked at um, what some cities have with these um, these restrooms that stand on the corner and are self-cleaning. Um, for instance, in San Francisco, they're very popular and very successful. And uh, they that's something that is self-standing and it could be put somewhere in a um, obvious place downtown and um yeah because town hall is not always open and what about on weekends i think uh, the issue of public restrooms downtown is a huge issue that's it thanks I haven't heard of those. Is that like a, it's like a porta potty or is it a sort of a better? Well, design? they're, um, Chris, have you ever seen those? Uh, they're self-enclosed. Um, I wish I could have a picture of one. I'd try and send it, but um, they're self-enclosed. I would say they stand about six feet, maybe eight feet long and four feet wide and they're green and you have to, I think they, there is a cost, it's 25 cents or 50 cents, probably more now. And you put a coin in and the door opens and after you leave, the entire thing is flushed and wow. cleansed. So it's clean in between. I think some people were concerned about them because they could be a place where someone could go and do drugs, but um, that's an issue. Yeah. 
that I don't know how how big a problem that is. I believe but, uh, Guilford has a res wants to respond, maybe. Yeah, the ones you're uh, the ones you're talking about are called Portland Lou's, and they have them in Boston. Right. Um, they run about one hundred eighty thousand dollars a piece. Um, we've looked at them. People have thought they'd be kind of nice, but we they haven't moved beyond that. Mm. Okay. Thanks, Elise. Um, I'm just going quickly going back to the sidewalk issue. Um, I heard from a source. Well, I heard from somebody who found out that. Is it true that the budget for sidewalks has gone down for fixing sidewalks? And there are some sidewalks that stop without any warning and you can't go any further. I tried to get to the middle school for a rehearsal and I couldn't do it. I missed the rehearsal. I'm just because wondering whether we have budget for, you know, is that really gonna go down the budget to fix sidewalks? Uh, I don't know. I... Gilford, you have a response. So the town the last five years has given capital money for sidewalk improvements. Um, uh -huh. And it's kind of been, it's kind of been just for big projects. So um, that would cover those type of things. Like I said, we're only concentrating on repairing what's there. Um, generally, overall, the maintenance budget for roads and sidewalks um, like potholes or just filling a little bad a bad section, that budget has gone down. Oh, okay. Potholes and stuff on the street, you know. But well, what about kids who have to walk to school? <laughs> potholes and sidewalks fall in that world too. So. Oh, okay. Just checking. All right, thank nice. you. Uh, Tori. Hi, I was going to ask about those bathrooms, but they're very expensive. I've never heard of them before. Um, do they come in accessible bathrooms? Those, I, I mean, the town won't purchase them anyway, but I'm curious. Do they come yeah, in? Yeah. They're fully accessible. They are. And so could the town instead purchase some porta potties? and maintain them um they they're cheaper i think than what you were talking about well r right now the town's looking at putting in a bathroom at the north end of town and one possibly at the south end of town um i think the one at the north end will go in first probably in the kendrick park area oh and it'll okay. be, it'll be, we've talked about prefab units. Um, we've also talked about a custom design. Now the planning inspection services department, they've designed something for a bathroom. Um, so we have that, that's really where we're heading right now. Okay. It's actually cheaper to build a facility, even though you have to clean it every day, it is cheaper to do that. Yeah. Well, it would be nicer in the winter. <laughs> okay. Um, I guess I have a question for for Guilford, and I know. Um, so I know the town has a complete streets policy, but doesn't have a complete streets prioritization plan. Is that on your radar at all? Um, because that would uh, would um, make you eligible for some funding. We have a policy. We have a priority plan, but it's our plan. We have not done it in the way MassDOT wants it done, and we have not submitted it to MassDOT. Okay. Um, okay. Well, that's that's something that town could do to access some it's up to four hundred thousand dollars of funding wouldn't cover everything but it might cover you know a few projects um anyone else have questions or comments um i also um wanted to mention that 
Mass Mobility is a really great um, resource out of Mass DOT um, that will look at all of the town's transportation services and look at what the gaps might be. And it sounds like, you know, with Amherst Neighbors ride service um, becoming increasingly popular, that might not be sustainable. But, you know, some communities get into uh, micro transit, which is sort of a ride service that you can contract out. Um, so it's something to think about, you know, going forward to, to fill those gaps. Uh, Chris, you have your hand up. I had a question for Liz about Amherst Neighbors. Um, is there a provision, or I guess maybe I should ask it the other way. Do people's private um, automobile insurance plans cover them for when they're transporting um, other people like um, Emerson neighbors talks about um, yes. how does how does that get handled the, it, that would be the first thing is somebody's private uh, insurance would cover it but if the claim goes above that um, we have our own insurance that would then cover the difference mm -hmm. okay thanks good question. Uh, Tori. Hi. Um, the ride share. Um, is there anyone with an accessible vehicle for the ride share program? Which ride share program? Well, the neighbors or um, I, that's a good question. I don't know that we know it's, uh, we have vo volunteers provide, use their own cars. So, probably not. so I, I'm, I think probably it's not. safe to say but no. I just <laughs> wondered. Yeah. Okay. yeah, no, that's a good question. Yes. And, and again, just to say that the senior center will be getting a van that is capable of taking someone in a wheelchair. You know, we're just waiting for the handoff. Um, to come so what um, hours will great. that be available Haley uh, you know kind of working at it we have some funding to play around with where we can pay for a driver um, but we'll most likely you know do during the day daytime hours and then perhaps as like a on-demand as needed service um, so if anyone's interested in driving you know also please tell your friends that you know we would like to uh, get some folks recruited for that as well you don't need a special license for this van you can any any driver's license will do how many how many seats are in the van it's an eight seat van unless there are people in a wheelchair uh, we can take two folks in wheelchairs um, and still take six other passengers wow right. so Elisa. yeah thanks um now now i'm confused about the the one the senior center is getting it sounds like fairly soon, assuming a driver's can be found. Mm -hmm. um, but that's different than the thing that, Becky, you were referring to, I think a couple of minutes ago about some towns contracting with some kind of, of service. Because it seems to me that given how spread out Amherst is and how mo most of us want to age in place and we couldn't afford to move to downtown even if we wanted to, that expecting fixed routes to take care of transportation when people can't drive themselves for whether forever or temporarily, it's just not gonna work. So some kind of um, increase to the number of things that are available for people to call up and reserve a, a ride sounds like a, a practical way to to go forward to me. I mean, the volu volunteers are great, but it shouldn't be the, the only thing. And the PVTA service it sounds good, but pretty heavily used. So more of that kind of service would be a good thing to find a way to have. Especially at night. Yes. Mm -hmm. A lot of seniors, a lot of people don't want to drive at night or can't. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. And yeah. if you want to if you want to go to a concert or participate as a musician in a concert or anything like that. Yeah. 
Does Amherst have any private taxis or and is Uber and Lyft available? People have tried to have taxi services, but I don't think any of them have survived very long. I believe Uber is available. Uber you have are both available. Assuming you have a cell phone and smartphone and all that, which it's a pain. Okay. Um, I did check with Celebrity Cab in Northampton once when I was, because they have a service with their senior center and it's a subsidized service for people to get around, but Celebrity won't come to Amherst. They um, feel like uh, they're just, they just have too much business already. Oh, huh. Yeah, that's something might that... might come on an, an occasion, but they wouldn't do a, a, a contract with us. Oh, interesting. Yeah, that's something Northampton did during the pandemic when they didn't have van service. They contracted with the taxi service. And I think they were able to use their PBTA funds or, or transit funds to do that. So, um, yeah, if you have a taxi service that will do it. Um, Chris. Um, for Amherst neighbors where uh, individual private people are driving others, um, is there an expectation that they will help the person that they're driving to get out of the van or out of the car and into wherever they're going? Or is it just um, you arrive and the person gets into the car by him or herself and then gets out of the car by him or herself? Is it just yeah. transportation or is it also help? Uh it is mostly people need to be able to get in and out of a vehicle themselves. Now we've had somebody who is a wheelchair. She uses a wheelchair, so she would wheel herself to the car, but was able to get herself in and out of the car and the volunteer could put the wheelchair in the car. Mm -hmm. um, and somebody may lend an arm, but will not, um, will not kind of bear the weight of doing it a full transfer in and out of the car. So it's more it's more a light assist. Yeah. The volunteers are primarily older people themselves and really not in a position to be lifting um, you know, passengers. Nor have they been trained in how to do it most safely. So yeah. Okay. That's a really good question. I'm glad you asked that, Chris. Same. Got it. Good. Uh, we talked about Uber services, Lyft services. For example, somebody like me, if I need to go to some to visit a friend or go to see a movie or something with friends at night, and uh, like uh, everybody can try to use Uber, but I cannot because they don't have any accessible vehicles because they just use the cars people have in their homes. Could there be like a stock of vans that could be used with Uber drivers when needed? Like the PVTA is going to place one in the town. Could there be several of those and available for in cases like there is a request coming from a person who needs to use one of these vehicles. I mean, oh. because when you think of the community and opening this community to more elderly people living there comfortably, transportation is a big need. Mm -hmm. And especially at night when there really is nothing after six o'clock, I was told by PVTA spokesperson. Well. Um, because Uber is a, uh, independent for-profit company, uh, I, that would be totally up to them Hi. to have their own, uh, type of service. It, nothing would surprise me if they start offering something like that. Um, but there, there are various, <clears throat> I don't know if it would be considered under medical transportation, but there are other providers that do medical transportation. Um, they may have hours that are outside of the that are outside of what PVTA offers, um, but that may only fall into actual for medical transportation needs, you know, going to an appointment or something like that. Um, 
unfortunately, I don't I don't think there would be any any way for us to contract with a third party to let them use a van um, like that. I mean, other than the councils on aging that we already do have contracts with, um, and we we do let them use certain we they do have vans in our contract with us. But out, outside of that, I I don't know if that's feasible. Yeah. But it's not a it's not a bad idea. Mm -hmm. Tracy. Yeah, so I just have a comment on that. I, I mean, I think that the MBTA, right, that they've tried for a few years, they've had um, an agreement with Uber and Lyft, for example, in terms of surveying paratransit needs on yeah. off-peak time. It's where they have been working directly with Uber and Lyft to, um, and giving, I think they give riders vouchers and things just because Rider and Lyft are able to provide a higher level of service than the PVTA, I mean, than the MBTA paratransit services would be able to provide at off peak times. And that seems to have worked really well. And it's run, that program, it's been piloted. I don't know what the current status of is, but it's been around for a few years. So it would be great if the PVTA could look at something similar. Yes. Uh, thank you for bringing that up. I'm yeah. going to. I and I can, um, I can send you information. There's some, Mass DOT has been funding the pilot project. So I can send you that information. And Could you also send that information to the DAC, please? Sure. Great. Access Advisory Committee. So we're almost just about at four o'clock. Um, I just wanna show, we've, um, change the uh, date of the next hearing we're not our next forum we're not going to have a forum in august um so we're we've moved the next one which is the fourth listening session health and community services and public safety um that one will now be on september 24th so it's a monday same time 2 30 to 4. um we haven't yet decide if we're going to do a Zoom registration or a Zoom link like this one. Um, so stay tuned and look at the um, Engage Amherst website on the Agent Dementia Family Amherst. Um, and then in October, we're going to have a form that's going to be provided in Spanish for Spanish speakers, and that will sort of go over all the topics. Um, Becky? Yes. On my calendar, it says, maybe I'm looking at this wrong it says monday is the 26th oh okay well <laughs> it's the 26th then sorry about that i will change that oh no, that's right thank you and luckily we haven't printed these flyers yet or anything so <laughs> um yeah that's always an issue all right well thank you we'll we'll fix that um and that's it. So thank you all for coming and for your great questions. And um, I think that definitely gives us some, some food for thought and um, to make some recommendations in the action plan. Um, so after these next two forums and we're sort of starting to, to work on the um, community assessment and action plan report, um, and then that will have a number of, of actions for the town to take in the next five years or so or priority actions that um, for the town to look into. Um, and so we'll we'll be working on that and I'm sure there will be a copy for folks to, to provide comments on. This is okay, wonderful. So. Thank you. Thank, Thank you, you very much. Yeah, this is great.